Hi, welcome to Common Threads. My name is Chip. My name is Aaron. And we are a bi-weekly podcast. Uh, we're going to be talking about sewing, crocheting, and knitting. And we're from Seattle, Washington. So there's plenty of uh, podcasts and YouTube channels that are for dedicated to sewing, knitting, and crocheting. But we're going to give you the guy's perspective. There's plenty of um, channels that... Or actually, there's plenty of guys out there that do it, but usually not in your local community. So we're here to uh, contribute to the to the online community. Yeah, we watch. I watch personally a few YouTube channels with women and females, but there aren't that many male knitter podcasts or vlogs. There's a few of them, like I said. And I think it's growing, but yeah. there's still not as many. Yeah, yeah. And I personally couldn't find. I saw found a few sewers who mostly kind of do tutorials. But yeah. I, I personally haven't found a sewing podcast, so we kind of want to mix sewing and knitting since we both work right. in different kinds of fiber arts and threads. And you know what? So like some of the, the podcasts that you've watched that I've, I've sat in for a couple of um, episodes where there's a couple of guys who knit that are in what, – what country are they in? That, well, the country or state? There's a couple of Well, there's the one – there, there's Minnesota. the two. Okay, there's two in Minnesota. But then there's also – who's the guys – that are from a different country. They have like this gorgeous garden. Carlos and uh, Carlos and um, this is terrible. Arn and Carlos. Arn and Carlos. Yes, but they are at a different. I mean, like extreme. they're amazing. Well, actually, I'm glad we're talking about them because, like, you and I were. I wouldn't say we're like completely noobs. Like, we're not like what is a hook and what is a sewing machine. But you know, we're not educators either yeah, so correct. we're we're along for a journey to show you hey this is what we're succeeding at this is what works for us and oh my god you know we're going to rely on our community to help us fix our f-ups you know like there's, there's a few there's a few yeah so okay so i've been sewing for two years i went to lululemon uh sorry to drop a name but they're like this entire store that Mercedes brought us to, our friend Mercedes, um, she had an exchange of bra, and so I'm just wandering around the store. So literally, there was just this one little area for men's clothes. And I was like, oh, this is pretty nice, and I checked it, checked it out, and I kid you not, there was like this $110 athletic shirt, or like it was a running shirt for men, and it was made in a third world country. And it just it just frustrated me. And I was like, you know what? I can do that. And so I came home and told you, like, I want a sewing machine. So yeah. you got me a sewing machine for my birthday. It was a brother. And I really, really enjoyed it. And so two years later, I'm still sewing. Yeah. And I was always at craft stores and stuff with you. So I passed a loom one day. I've been, I love knitted sweaters, knitted cardigans. I'm kind of a old man per se because I love cardigans and Mr. Rogers thing and I've always ugly loved, ones I've always loved knitted hats so I passed the loom found some clearance uh, clearance yarn and I loomed a couple of hats for about a week and gave them out to some friends and sent them some to the hospital then I picked up crochet hook started doing my, my crochet thing wait 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 that was really nice you kind of breezed over that so you sent it to I remember you you knitting your first hats uh -huh. are nets hats and scarves and you sent them to the cancer. Yeah, I had a had a it sounds bad. Uh one of my friends had a, a very rare form of cancer. So the very first hat I loomed, um I posted it on Facebook and with a picture of a beer hat watching the Seahawks game said, Hey, she goes, Oh, I would love that hat. So I actually sent it to her. Then she goes, if you make any more, let me know. So I actually loomed, I think, five more, sent them to her. I said, please keep one that you like and give the others away and donate to the hospital because this was, I think, OSU. Was it John Hopkins or something like that? Some hospital at OSU. Uh, unfortunately, she passed. She's no longer with us. Mm -hmm. But between you going to uh, fabric stores and sadly her passing away, that's how my fiber journey began. Because I started uh, looming hats, then I moved on to crochet, and crocheted uh, many. Started crocheting many hats, but I always liked the look of stockinette better than crocheted hats. Tried knitting, tried knitting. I tried always. knitting too, 
I mean, like I, I could do it. Yeah. But I hated it. It was just like I, I felt like it just got the same thing over and over and over again, and it just it raised my anxiety, and I was like, this is not for me. I've always enjoyed it. I'm a hands person. I'm a musician. I play guitar. I play drums. Um, I am not. As I get older, the music's taken a little bit more backseat. Still love it. Play every day. But I just need to do something with my hands, and whether it's gardening or crocheting or knitting. So I tried knitting many times. Crochet I learned through YouTube from many different people. Knitting I tried through YouTube, and I just couldn't get past the first row. It ticked me off. It was so tight. So I took a class from Aunt Joanne's and I needed that one-on-one -on -one interaction to get me over the hump. Then once I came home and started, well, first off, I can't throw as I think that's what it's called. Then one day I saw someone continent, continental knitting on YouTube and it opened up my whole world because left hand hold the thread uh, yarn for uh, crochet. So once I started holding the yarn with my left hand for continental knitting, it was like boop, 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 and everything started to make sense. So, so my, yeah, I've been knitting for about six months now. And that's where, like for both of us, our, our, our community, it's not like our, grand, our grandparents. You know, they could go to their, there's plenty of people back then that would have a community where if you didn't learn, you didn't understand something, somebody else did. And it was mm -hmm. like usually a relative, a friend, and... Especially for guys today, there's not a lot of people that we have to turn to. So, common thread uh, is the internet, and that really is the online community is yeah. is our, our our go to now. And so I learned through YouTube how to sew, and it's been a great resource. And now it's our turn to contribute to yeah. that. There is a Seattle men's knitting group that meets every Saturday. I just not have not made it down there yet. One, I'm a little intimidated. I know everybody's going to be totally nice and totally cool. And I hate paying for parking. So I don't want to get down there, pay for parking, have to feed the meter every two hours and that kind of thing. So, so you got excuses. Yeah, I got excuses. Okay. But eventually I will go and hang out and knit and all that good stuff. Yeah. And so like I know one person is through you who, who um, sews, but he lives far away. So... And it's hard to take your sewing machines to different yeah. places like, yeah. as a group and talk over that. So. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, uh, now that you've learned a little bit about us, we're going to continue on. We have a segment we're called, You Made That? You Made That? You Made That? You know when you go in and you're like, you're, you're excited. You just came through and you, you made a new... You made a new scarf, you made some mittens, you made a new shirt, whatever it is. And... You want to share that. You were like, yeah. hey, look look what I did. And somebody just looks at you like you have three eyes. And it's like, you made that? So Basically, we, it's like a mother saying it. But my mother doesn't have that voice. No. So, so anyway, this is the segment's called, you made that? Uh, last few months, I made a few hats. My very first, this is actually my first crocheted hat that I ever made, which is amazing. Is yes. Do you ever make someone something the first time and it's perfect? Then you make it again and you're like, what happened? I've done that on shirts. So this is kind of an oatmeal gray color. My color's a little off because I have a little bit of color blindness. Uh, this is Vanish Choice. Well, it's, it's like, like a heather. Coat. It's like a heathered heather, oatmeal. Tweed, whatever. But it's more of a slouchy hat. So I'm going to put it on so all the cool kids... I do love that hat. I have these kind of hats. Yeah. I like this hat a lot. I, like, I like neutrals. Yeah. I try to make my hats always a little bit tighter than what they say. Because I notice if I put it on the first day and it's perfect, my big ears are going to stretch it out and make it kind of go. Yeah. I feel like that way about my jeans. Yeah. Then that's why you no matter what, them. No matter what pair of jeans I, I, I buy, they always stretch out. Uh, here's another one I have made just out of scrap yarn. This is a knitted. I wish I can remember the yarn. I think this is just actually, I don't know what this is. I think it's Lion Brands of wool. And it's a blue, gray, and red mix. Let's see it in there. And then I added and made a little pom-pom at the end. Out you, of the leftover you were stuff. on a pom-pom kick for a while. I was. I liked my pom-poms. And this one is nice because it keeps my ears really warm because it's kind of, if you pull it down, there's some purple in there. 
but this is way too sloppy if I if I don't rib it. Okay, and you're losing it. <laughs> yeah. The last hat, I got this free pattern off of Ravelry. It's Fisher, and it's by Lindsay Felice, and it looks like it's from 2011. But I would suggest doing this pattern because I really enjoyed it. I made this in a... Is this a, free? Yes, it's free pattern on Ravelry. It's a worsted weight yarn, and the bottom is cabled, and the top just goes to stockinette. I'm going to put it under maybe this camera a little bit so you can see the colors there. Seahawks inspired since we live in the Seattle. It's very Seahawks inspired. It wasn't that hard. I was intimidated by cables. Later I'll show you another hat that got me kind of hooked on Oh, I didn't even cables. realize. So you have yeah, it's cables ribbed. Is this ribbed? Yeah, ribbed. And then a cable bottom. And then you have cable. Yeah. Oh. So yeah, and this is more of a tight fitted, just kind of beanie kind of thing. But yeah, I suggest this pattern because I really, really enjoyed it. Chip. Is that all you got? That's all I have to show. Oh, I do have something else. Oh, there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I am sorry. I made my first Shaw. I've always admired Shaws, but always didn't admire the way some people wear. Well, mostly you think of grandma, mostly grandma wearing their Shaws kind of around their shoulders. But this is... Um, Larna's laces in the Christmas Downton color. So there's some reds and greens and blues in there. It's very it's, soft. Yeah, it's the Boneyard Shaw by Stephen West. Wait, wait, what's the uh, what's that thing on there? <laughs> so I made this Shaw. It probably took him a couple of weeks, and I finished it, and I wear it all the time, kind he, of around the house. You wear that like it's. Going out of style. I get home, I put on my PJ bottoms, and then I keep the house very cold because I hate pain. No, 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 hair. no. Don't blame it on that. This, you're playing, oh, I'm dressed up. Yeah. I'm wearing pajamas, but I'm dressed up. So, yeah, I like to put it on when I get home, like this, or just kind of put it over my face and just kind of watch TV or net, whatever. But I noticed a couple days afterwards that I somehow finished this whole project and I dropped a stitch. And that's why there is a little stitch marker right here. Well, why do you keep that on there? Because I don't know how to fix it. So what is the stitch going to do? Or what's so the thing going to do? It's going to keep it from falling out again. Because I had to crochet a couple things back up. And Can you I'm just either, put a knot on it? I can, I can probably put a knot on it. Just been too lazy. Or I can look up and see if anybody has a YouTube tutorial. Or I thought about putting a little gem on there. Like a skull or something awesome mm -hmm. it's kind of rocket but yeah this is my boneyard shaw by stephen west which keeps me warm and that uh, i really enjoy no i really admire it i like it since we're on the thing I, of shaws and i actually would never i wouldn't i i never would even have thought about wearing a shaw and i really love that yeah I, love it. I forgot to show you my muff what i also have these we uh i started making these last year these are crocheted these are made out of Homespun yarn from Lion Brands, which if you look at the yarn, it looks, it's very interesting yarn. I don't even know what to say about it. It's, it's almost like there's little pearls or something on it. Like yeah. Each one has a little. But like reading the comments and stuff usually on the review of this yarn and the needle size they give, it's kind of frustrating to knit with this or crochet with because things get stuck and it's kind of, I don't know, it separates a little bit easy. Yeah, but you know what? It's, it's got a nice halo to it. It does have a nice halo to it. So what I did is just put up many hook sizes and do a double crochet, half double crochet, and just made like these. We call this them, is the same we stuff? We call them muffs. Yes, this is the same stuff. So this one's like a black and gray one. And you put it around your neck. I made these for a lot of ladies at work. Uh, sold a few in my lifetime. Mm -hmm. um, no, actually, I was proud because you actually sold... You you sold a lot. I probably sold like thirty or forty of these, mm. and I see them people still wearing them around the office or even out of the office to some people. So I can make a a single muff, or I can make like this purple one. I can make a double muff. A double muff. A double muff, and we call them Mercer muffs because we live some. We don't live on Mercer Island, but there's a community next to us called Mercer Island. So the Mercer just, muff. The Mercer muff. So. I think I look incredibly handsome. I think my favorite's this one. Yeah, I have a longer one of that. Like, I have so many colorways of this. So, 
if you ever see homespun and you're like, what do people do with it? Just try one of these. It's, oh, this is green in it's it, It's a half too. double crochet, and it was very easy. I thought this was black and white. It's actually, it's got some greens in it. Yeah. Mm. yeah I'm sorry. I didn't forget I even had these. Yeah. So, Chip, you made that? I did make that. Let me show you what I made. Okay, so I made... So, traditionally, I have been more of a garment sewer for the past two years. Correct. And... I really, when it comes to my sewing, I like um, I like more technical stuff. I like things that are going to give me a challenge. I love to work with plaids, matching stripes, matching. Um, I like the geometry, but I've been I haven't been afraid of a fork in, in the last year or so. So I I don't want to make any clothes for myself, and. Instead, lately I've been, I made like, okay, I gotta make something. So I made a project bag. And what's funny is that I didn't realize that these are kind of like everybody's into their project bags. And in the knitting I, community and crochet community, yeah, especially. Because I wanted to make a bag for you. And this one wasn't for you. This was just some scrap fabric that I had. But I really, it was a good just project, you know, and it's gratifying because on these, you make them and. You're like you're done with in within an hour or so. Yeah. Um, and you're like, oh, I have a sense of completion. Yeah, I, I like this one a lot. Yeah. So this one I didn't put a tag on, but does this one have an inner tag? It does. He, he likes the inner tags. Which I are like very the inner cute. tags. This one says "I'm a flamingo." So very cool. It's light on the inside. So when you have your tools and stuff, they don't get lost with the dark colors. So I've made several bags, and this is my favorite bag that you have made. This is this is your favorite? Yeah, oh. seamen, sailors, or like sea captains. Yeah, yeah, seamen, not seamen. Oh, okay. But we took a trip down to Portland, and my favorite uh, store to shop in person has been Fabric Depot, which they're actually online too, fabricdepot.com. And they had the, um, they had this vinyl on sale for, I mean, it was like $2 a, a yard. It was just like, I'm like, well, God, you got, you have to. Mm -hmm. And then you found this fabric and it was just, it was just fun. You know, it's like, hey, I'm a guy who sews. Like this would be more of like for your sweater bag. Yeah, yeah. yeah more a sweater bag size. And I don't, all bags are nice and stuff, but there's a lot of bags out there with butterflies. I got nothing against butterflies. Or the foxes. I Everybody's just, doing those foxes. I didn't want a butterfly bag. I want yeah. something a little bit different. All right, next bag. This is also my second favorite, which yeah. we found at a place down the street, the fabric. I made that one absolutely too. love this one. So this has the same bottom wool fabric as the pink bag did. And I just like, I love these wingtips. Yeah. I think I like the colors and it's just a fun bag. So my thing is basically now finding fabric for him to make me bags. Well, so you asked for a smaller one. So, I would love a smaller one and this and that. So, but are you, are you saying for like hats, what? anything like that? And so this like one, half the size? Sorry. In this one inside it says, I am a fox. Oh, he's a fox. I am a fox. Yeah. There's one, I don't remember which one it was, but it said, I'm a bear. We have that one. We have that one? Yeah. Oh, sorry. Oh, this is the one that, okay, so when I decided, hey, you should learn how to sew. And so I made this. I made this the same night. He, yeah. So that was probably, I mean, like when it comes to us, me teaching you something, you hate to be taught something. You want to go on YouTube and, like especially you said, with people that I know. I like, have a problem with learning from loved ones. Like, you teaching me something, this is terrible. You teach me something is always like, ugh. And then for some reason, growing up, my sister is like, hey, I want to teach you this or show you this. I'm like, I don't know why, what it is. I'd rather be taught by a stranger. Yeah. Well, that was an amazing day. So you did really, <laughs> really well. There was no argument. Here's I'm a bear. And he's a bear. And yes. I mean, we're not into bears or anything, but it was just cute. Yeah. Very yeah. Cute. Yeah. 
So, okay, so we got project it's bags. It's my first and last sewing experiment. It just, I just don't think That it's you me. know for now. Yeah, okay. exactly. So, speaking of project bags, so I do have some other, um, some other uh, material that is going to be made. So, we have the campers. I can't believe you're showing this. And. This is unscripted. What do, <laughs> what do we have? Oh, so he, oh, we have. This is our humor. So we've got to have some bags that's made in, in the boys. This is for when we go hiking yeah. in the woods. That you're going to be knitting in the woods. <laughs> I'll knit anywhere. Okay, so you've got um, you've got the boys in the woods. And then you have the cowboy rocker. Bam, bam. Pow. And then this one, he's got a, he's got a ghetto blaster. Who wants a ghetto blaster and these and days? And I love these. Like, these remind me of, like, people who get those crazy-ass tattoos that are just, like, these cheap. Like, they, they can only afford so much tattoo, and this is what they get. Yeah. Just the stars. Okay, so you got the, the that one. And then you have the ranch hands. Oh, girl. The ranch hands. So, yep, yeah, there we go. Yep. Did you notice that there's some um, cactus there? <laughs> <laughs> I did not. Yeah. And so there. Yep. Oh, and he's got rope. <laughs> Yeehaw. Yeehaw. All right. Now you've got everybody needs How some. How do we have? I don't know. People are going to think we're weird. I know. But you got, this guy's really happy. He is a fix-it. Do it yourself. He likes to do it himself. That, that's what all fix-it guys that I see around the neighborhood look like. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And he's got Typical. a big piece of wood. Okay. okay. <laughs> all right. So now, and he's got a, he's he's got got a, a nice great tool. smile for he's got, And he's a winking character. at you. He's, got the, he's a winker. I don't know if you can see that. He's a winker. The thing is, if we made project bags out of these, I don't think I could ever leave the house with them. Why? Where are you going to go? Church? All right, and of course, you've got our firefighters. I love, I wish I could wear, where is it? I wish I could wear shorts like this. Someday, you know, maybe again? Who knows? But we're, we're so all we actually, don't, all we don't have is cops. We don't have cops. We, we saw some this weekend, but we didn't go back and get it. Yeah. So that's for future little project bags. And now, the... Last thing I had is that you made that. Mm -hmm. All right. So, again, I was on the search for something new to make. And I have always said I was never going to try quilting. It's just, the, when it comes to sewing, my least favorite activity is the entire cutting. Because I go a little bit A-type where I, everything has to be perfect. Mm -hmm. And it's just like, right. I'm going to spend, spend so much time on the cutting and it's still not right. So that's why I never wanted to do quilting. But I'm like, hey, there's bees, bumblebees. Bzz. Bzz. And that's the name of the, the pattern. Bzz. It's by Whole Circle Studio. And this is a paper piecing pattern, which until I came across this, uh, this pattern, I never knew about paper piecing. Which is kind of crazy because it's been around for like 200 years. Mm -hmm. So apparently you can go to some like very old quilts. And if you were to take them apart, there's still remnants of paper. And it's really, it's a great way of quilting because you don't have to be so meticulous with your, with your cutting. And like you just get an oversized piece of um, fabric than the piece that you actually need lay it on and then you're sewing from the bottom all the time so i'm going to go into more paper piecing uh, talking uh discussion in the future but this was my first foray into it and i'm calling this one beheaded Bzz. and this is a mini quilt and if you notice in the in the original <laughs> there's supposed to be two yellows there's supposed to be a gray and a black I dumbed it down and just made it black, um, black, white, and yellow. And I call it beheaded because I got frustrated on one of the, um, on one of the parts that the head that 
it just wasn't working out right. And so I said, oh, okay, I'm going to skip this step. And so actually they're missing their heads. I skipped the step and it still worked out, but there should be heads, but that's why I call it beheaded. And so it still needs to be finished on, on the back. Um, the only thing I have to do now is sandwich it, which means layering the, the back, okay. the quilting cotton, and then the top layer, and then I've actually got to quilt it and then do the binding on the on the ends. But I think it's a very good for your first time since yeah. they don't have heads. Yeah, be headed. And what I what's I mean, like if I could have even made my first try into a quilt or a mini quilt even more difficult, I didn't use quilting cotton. I used a synthetic um, polyester, and because it was so, such flimsy fabric and thin. I doubled up on it because I was just using scraps of what I had around the house. I didn't want to, you know, pay good money to buy new fabric. Yeah. So it was just, it was a challenge. And I'm really glad I did it because it was more difficult. I didn't start out with something that was really, really very easy to do. I started out with something more complicated. So you know what? You start high and you can always, you know, it only gets easier after that. So yeah, this was a great cool. project. Good right, job. So that's all I've got for you made that. You made that. All right, what's yeah. next? What did we do this weekend? We went to the So Expo in uh, Puyallup. Puyallup. Uh, Alexa, how far is Puyallup, Washington? Puyallup is 33.3 .3 miles away by car. Okay. So it's a little bit south of the Seattle area where, where we live. Yeah. About a 45 minute trip. Trip. It was a nice day. We just got in the car. We got there pretty early. It started at 8. We probably read about 8.15. It was chilly when we first got there. I was expecting, a, I don't know, We every convention we've ever gone to, not that we've been to many, we get there we've early. We've been to two. And we're like, yes. We've been to, our first one was in LA. My first trip last year to DragCon. Went to DragCon. We went to DragCon. And we're going again this year. That's... In, in May. A few, in a few months. Um, it seems like we get there early and there's no one there. We're like, where is everybody? And then like two hours after we get there, boom, all the people are there. Oh so, my God, the cotton puffs multiply. <laughs> it is. But no, it was a good time. Well, so... It was an all right time. Well, okay. So talking about... Oh, the, well, we didn't say the second... So we, you said we went to two other expos. Oh, and we went to... Uh, in the November or November or October, we went to... Vogue Live Knitting in Seattle. Which, which literally was a mile away from our yeah, house. Yeah, we took the bus. took us like three minutes. And we got there early and there wasn't that many people. Then towards lunchtime, I don't know if we're just early people or what. Well, we spent two days at DragCon. Mm -hmm. We spent two days at Vogue Knitting Live. Yeah, we didn't say the whole days for Vogue Knitting Live. So since we live so close, we we're kind of... Yeah. Four hours, four hours. And we didn't do any of the classes at your Vogue Knitting Live. Um, would you do classes there? Uh, next year, if it comes back to Seattle, I don't have it looked. I, I might do a few classes because there's so much I got to learn, especially fixing things. That's a huge thing. And just and yeah. colors. I'm, I need to be less scared of colors. I'm a big blue, gray, that kind of person. And I want to be not that extreme to go the Stephen West route of Bam, pink, blah, blah, blah. But I love what he does. But maybe I just need to let myself go and do that kind of stuff. It's kind of funny. Okay, so you, I didn't really know who Stephen West was. I I was exposed to Stephen West through you, and then we saw him at Vogue Live. That's a lot of look. It is, but... He, but but the, the, you said that it was funny when you look at him, like, he started out, and he was more conservative yeah he's turned up the eccentric yeah which is great i think that's what he's doing that's who he is and yeah i want i want to mix in those colors and stuff but maybe not to that extreme i mean i'm not i'm wearing black and white right now but and i'm in gray i have some color in my life yeah well well those are the two conventions we've been to but then we just went to the so expo. so we went to the so expo and i had a brochure I don't know where it is, but that's okay. So we we ordered tickets uh, for two days, and it's actually a four-day event. And it was Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. We didn't get to go Thursday and Friday because obviously we had to work. 
But on Saturday, we got there at 8.30, and the, the show was 8 to 6. And then Sunday, it was 8 to 4, I think. Mm -hmm. So we went yesterday, and it was, uh, like, I, I went into it expecting that it was going to be a lot of merch. Um, well, I, I mean, like, I was, uh, it was pretty much what I expected. It was a lot, a lot, a lot of people and which is encouraging. Mm -hmm. There were not a lot of men. Most of the men that I saw were actually working the booths. We made up the one percent. Me, my friend Eric, and you. We yeah. were literally the only men I saw there in was, our like, age group that it, were there. But agreed, bathrooms no problem. <laughs> Every time you went, it was you got your own space. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so I went in wanting. I had two objectives. One. I knew Bernina was going to be there. They were one of the big sponsors. And they had, like, so many spaces. Oh, like, right. booths. Like, they, they really dominated as far as... Well, actually, Janome was big and Brother Theirs was big. Theirs was big. It's just Bernina's was in two buildings for some reason. The ones that go like this. So I the, don't know why they weren't with... The those are the stuff. free motion. The free motion ones were with the other ones. Yeah. I mean, weren't with the other ones. And right. That makes sense to me. So... And we had a hard time finding them, but when we did, it was like, oh, here they are. They really represented. Yeah. And I wanted to visit their booth because I, I have a Bernina 780. And Fancy. I know. Uh, I had a good deal. Yes. You didn't know how good a deal I had. He snuck it in the house. That's how good a deal it was. Yes. Yes. So he's outside walking the cat. and I'm a weird one and I walk our cat. And he comes in and he's just, he has a kind of a puzzled look on his face. And I'm like, by the end of the day, I'm like, I have to tell him about this. So I found the machine on Craigslist and it was an insane, insane, insane deal. The lady never sewed on it. She only quilted on it just a little bit. I mean, like there, there was like no miles on it. Yeah. And this is a $10,000 machine. And I was, I mean, it was, it was insane. So I tell you, I have to come clean about something. I, when I was walking to Cat, I knew his machine and what he has. I would, we live in a split level. So if I'm out front walking the Cat, I look down through this window and he, this is a little sewing station. And I was like, I don't remember his sewing machine having a touch screen. Kind of passed it off and stuff. And that night he's like, I gotta tell you something. Freaked me yeah, out. Yeah, 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 yeah. But all's well. It's fine. I've got a Bernina. We go to the Sew Expo and they have, it's their 125th anniversary. And so to celebrate their anniversary, they have a, uh, a golden foot. A golden foot. And so I was like, oh, okay, maybe I'll get the, you know, the anniversary foot. Um, yeah, it's $125, a dollar for every year that they've been in business. And I was like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I don't think so. So first gold, thing. Gold spray paint's like five bucks. Yeah, I, I just couldn't see doing it. So then the second thing I was looking for is the lock block ruler. And that's for quilting. And so it just makes your perfect, perfect square. And nobody had it. And I'm, I'm still like, I'm going to be doing some homework on it. Uh, I, I. You can't find them on Amazon. You can find them on eBay, but not, I mean, like other than going to their website. So wasn't it struck to struck to uh, X's there. I couldn't, I couldn't find them, but you found other stuff though. I found other stuff. <laughs> so that leads me into had to have it. You had to have it. Had to have it. So when I, so now that I'm quilting, I know I'm going to need a good pair of gloves so I found a pair of machine um, quilting gloves that just allow you to grab the fabric as you're moving the fabric around. So it's not slipping in your hands. So got some gloves. Mm -hmm. And then we have a friend who loves, 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 loves the, I don't even know what it's called. It's like the Mexican skulls. I know um, it did del work they i'm gonna really say that better. i don't know but they have the mexican skulls they have the luchador masks that go over their heads and stuff yeah. like that so this is um 
20 different em embroideries and you can do a 6x10 hoop mm -hmm. or an 8x12. They look cool. Half the price of what you could have found on Amazon is like, it's really not my thing, but it's totally going to be a great Christmas gift when I make or something. Then I've got the, um, when it comes to quilting, one of the hardest things you can do is curves. And so I, again, love a challenge. This is, it's really considered a one patch quilt because there's only one shape and or it's like tessellated it's the same pattern repeated and so uh-huh it's chilly though so like this isn't going to be my fur my next project but uh, you know down the road i think this will be fun then we found again you would think we were into bears but we're not <laughs> that's terrible but we <sighs> There was this one thing, and it was like all of the they had how they had Halloween things. They oh, had, this thing's adorable. Yeah, so this picture doesn't do it <clears throat> justice, but this can be a wall hanging or it can be a pillow, and it's called Warm in My Paws, and it really is cute. It's a bear in front of a fire, and yeah, he's just warm in his paws. So adorable. It is adorable. So they cute. had a real one um, in person, and it was just so cute. So I was like, you know what? Yeah. Had to have it. He had to have it. Had to have it. Okay, so then Eric, your friend, like constantly, like he's been he's been sewing as long as I have. And yeah, he sounds he, he sounds like a rep. Like I feel like oh my he's God. our friend, and I feel like he was a plant. Oh my by, God! By he the kept, sewing institution expo, he's like, you got to talk to this person. Got he knew so many salespeople at this expo that were all local that who were representing. And he's like, okay, you got to talk to this person. And he's like slamming me on these people. And so then I'm like, I I'm like not even having questions. And I'm like, oh, okay. And I'm like coming up with questions. And these are really fine people. But then he says, oh, you've got to go to this AccuQuilt. Uh, you know, if you're into quilting, you know, you've got to have, you, you've got to have this thing because it's going to quilt all, it's going to um, cut all your pieces for you and i'm like no i said it's a slippery slope once you start buying those those dies mm -hmm. you got to keep buying them because you know one's not going to fit off <laughs> we passed it up and came back and okay we did the demo we did the demo so i wound up so might as well bring it up oh my god oh here's the the sewing if you are going to buy this thing Make sure you have a friend to help you. Yeah, this thing, like, so... It's 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 not the lightest thing in the world. No. Is this the back or front? This is the, well, it's the back, but it shows a bigger thing. So, uh -huh. like, these pieces of fabric, so you're going to end up... There's different size dies that you can get. So, this is the 8-inch, and that will leave me with even numbers. So, don't even worry. I'm going to do a whole another... I haven't even opened up the box. Um... And I just got it yesterday, and I don't plan on opening it for a while because I need to finish what I'm doing now. But, long story short, they had a deal, and so I had to have it. So, it came with the electronic cutter, then it came with the 8-inch blocks. Mm -hmm. Oops, am I on something? Yep, it's all right. Okay, it came with the 8-inch mix-and-match blocks, and then, of course, that comes with patterns. And then it came with a ruler, and I actually, I already have one like this. You have like 8,000 rulers. I needed, I need one more, and I didn't find it this weekend. But this one, I'm telling you, the Go ruler is amazing, because the ruler I already have, it's never right for me. I always have to count backwards, whereas this one, that doesn't, that's not helpful. Okay. I um, tried. Yeah. This one is, I can go, I'm right-handed, and I have my numbers one, two, six. Mm -hmm. The other rulers are backwards, so I'm always having to say six minus whatever. And it's just it's just annoying. So it came with a ruler, and then it came with a rotary cutter. This one's, I'm actually kind of glad that I got this one because I have one that is a squeeze, and then you push. I also have the other one where you just push, and then it works. This one is just... A little lever and then you go so it's like they all work three different ways yeah which is funny because Eric was saying like when we were walking around through the expo he's like just think about it 
all of these products that people are coming up with are to solve some kind of problem that they've encountered while they're doing their their crafts which when it's when i spoke to the um the go people at, at AccuQuilt, they're like most for most quilters the most miserable part of their um their hobby is the cutting and it was funny because it was like yes that is for me i i hate cutting and so like this is really going to be like you can cut six pieces of uh, like six squares at a time and it's like boom 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 but it's like some david copperfield shit excuse my language david copperfield stuff yeah because you see it go through the process and you put a plastic thing over it and i don't understand i don't know how it cuts how and cutting. how the blade if you watch a video on it or sometime or if you own it does one, look like I magic don't, i don't understand if like little it's elves illusion. come up and start cutting stuff it's just all right so it came with the eight dies and so i'm gonna have that's supposed to come up um, when you do the eight dies, it ends up being like 72 different block designs, mm -hmm. which I'm going to pair with Tula Pink's Modern Quilt Blocks. So like this is a wonderful book because it's all like recipes of different blocks and it gives you just, hey, it needs to be this size fabric and this, this size square. And, you know, it's like, that's all I need is the recipe yeah. and... I can go. <laughs> Girl, get it? Ugh. So it came with that. It came with the self-healing cutting mat. Again, I love it because it gives you a right-handed or a left-handed ruler. Mm -hmm. So it's not like, you know, I mean, like they really thought of like the, the, the user. And that's what I do for a living. I'm a user researcher. And it's like I'm the guy who's between technology and humans. And so like... This made me smile because it's like they've actually thought about people. So let's move this out. It's going to save you a lot of time. And it'll save me a, a lot of time. I need that as well. It'll be time paying for it. But yeah. So then it, so it came with the self-healing mat, this green one. And then the cutter, it came with the dies, and it came with a strip. <clears throat> Um, cutter so oh and a book it came with um what's her name uh, oh i can't think of who wrote the book who wrote the book who wrote the book oh well we'll give her she's a crazy lady i forget her name <laughs> uh but she's very good she's a she's a good educator so it, it was a great package deal and i said you need to give him a um a, a referral fee for eric because I was so like, no, 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 I don't want to go to that booth. Next thing you know, I'm buying um, I'm another one, buying the whole kit. And so they gave him um, a self-healing mat, just a little bit smaller. Yeah. I was like, how great is that? That was nice, though. So it wasn't actually the um, the AccuQuilt people. It was quality selling and, and um, vacuums. Yeah. That it was the local dealer that represented at the expo. And they really, really were nice. They wanted to make sure that I understood what I was getting and why. Because they have different um, different size kits. So, like, there's a 6-inch, an 8-inch, a 9-inch, a 10-inch, and a 12-inch. And, like, they were walking me through why and rationalizing why I might want to go with this one. And I really did feel comfortable. That said, I haven't opened it yet. And in a future uh, episode, I'm really going to go more in-depth once I, yeah, that'd be cool. I can go through it. So, that was my had to have it. I haven't had many had to have it lately, but two weeks ago I picked you up from work and it was kind of, I needed some yarn therapy on the way home. Yarn so, therapy. <laughs> yarn therapy. So I picked up these. They're all the same company, which is, what is it? It's Black Trillium Fibers. And I got thinking about making another shawl or two. The only bad thing is that I got one of these that was actually a DK weight and the rest of them are worsted. Well, why is that bad? Well, it's not, well, they're different sizes i mean you could try to mix them together and it'll look fine but it's just going to be a, oh it's the mixing yeah. you're talking about yeah yeah so the dk one that i picked up that i absolutely love that was supposed to go with these two is called flint and i don't know if you're going to be able to see it in there but i also put it under here so maybe you can kind of see it it's a really cool gray looking and it was supposed to go with this black trillium which is a purple 
No, and com- isn't Black Trillium the company? Yeah, but this this one that's what that one's called. Oh, it's also called the yeah. Asian. And it's this is a, a worsted. Is that the colorway? Yes, the colorway. Okay. And it's a, kind of like a purple, washed out purple. My color's a little off from the colorblind. And this one is cherry blossom. Take the, uh, the thing out of the. I don't know the if you can no, see. take the light out. It's in the frame. That? Cherry blossom. Which I'll put yeah. down here so you can get a better look of it. My whole thing was trying to create these things to be. So kind these of three like are going to go together? Yeah. Yeah, those three are going to go together. Let me pull them up again. And they were, well, they were supposed to go together until I realized that they're different colorways. Oh. Then these three are going to go together, which these are the same company. These are a worsted weight. These two are Camelot, which there's a lot of kind of oranges and blues in there. I like that. Kind of a washed out color. Is that more like fall? Yeah, I think so. And it's going to go with this one is slate. And if you can see that right there, so that's you got, more of a gray. The slate and the flint, kind of similar, but the slate's a little bit more washed out. So you got two of the Camelot. Yeah. And they were supposed to go together. Yeah. And that's really the only thing that I have purchased recently. No, get it out of the... Uh-huh. No, get it out of the frame. Uh-huh. Sorry. Okay. All right. So what about this one? Ow, right in my eyes. This one... Uh, is gonna be for what are you making? Oh, which we can move on to that actually. Since when we were at Vogue Live Knitting Seattle, he won for a raffle. I don't even I don't even knit or crochet. I was just along for the ride, and I thought <laughs> if I put my name down, maybe you win something. This is a fingering weight cashmere squeeze, seventy five percent merino. Superwash Merino, 15% cashmere, and 10% silk. It is from Palouse Yarn Company. And These everybody that was there was so, so nice. nice to us. They were so nice. They, I mean, like, they get, I mean, I understood that I was winning something, but mm-hmm. then they're like, oh, yeah, just pick out what you want. Yeah. From that wall. <laughs> yes, exactly. And then, but then they were like, they were putting it in a, in a canvas bag, and then they were putting, um, they put some uh, a lavender sash in there. I mean, like, I forget there was something else, too. And I was just like, oh, that's all. And I felt so guilty that I was taking, even mm-hmm. though, I mean, I, when I was supposed to, I was like, well, can I buy two more of those? And, like, I wanted to make, make it worth their while. Yeah. And I was like, I was trying to tell you this, is, you know, hey, take my win. This is my color. And but you I would, was like, oh, no, 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 I can't. And I, so I picked this out. I think it's, it's, it's got blue and green. And it is so, so soft and mine. And I am currently making him, I'm making Stephen West's Boneyard Shaw, which is a free pattern on Ravelry. So Stephen West's Boneyard Shaw free pattern. I'm currently making this for him. It's the exact same as this, only this is worsted. This is becoming a nightmare only what? because it is fingering weight and it's taking forever. And I've never done anything with fingering weight. So well, what's that? I'm so enjoying what? it. So what? It's just, so what? Who cares? It's just smaller, so it's just taking longer than I like. Does this take more? It. Well, like this has, let's say this worsted has uh, 200 yards in it. This has 400 yards in it. So it's just a lot smaller. But so because it's smaller, it. does it even out to the same? I was told there'd be no math. Okay. Okay. So... This is four ounce. This is three and a half ounce. Yeah. So, but it's probably going to equal out to be the same size, right? Because of the density. But of I the have, stitches. I'm one thing I'm loving about. Okay, so somehow I got lucky, and Stacy from Very Pink Knits had a giveaway of Zing needles, Knitters Pride Zing needles, probably about a month ago, and somehow the Universe was aligned, and I won these. I'm very grateful. So I actually won the Zing Needles that Knitter's Pride had on her podcast. And it was... It's, they're great. I love them. I've had Knitter's Pride before. Christmas, he got me some Knitter's Pride needles I put on my wish list. And the joins just weren't right. And they were half wood. And the tips were metal. And everything came on falling off. So we returned them. 
And I was kind of and nervous. And you didn't get anything else. I didn't get anything else. I was kind of worried when these came because I was like, oh, I wanted them, of course. They've been perfect. They've been great. I love working. So with what's them. the difference? Because these have metal. The ones the I other ones had metal. I don't know what the difference is. One is the joins. The for some reason this pack the joins are much better. The ones I got at Christmas, the yarn was getting stuck between the joins, which obviously I didn't care for. So that's one of the huge reasons. On the I limited edition. Yes, there were some limited edition ones that looked great, but for what I was doing, for some reason that set did not work. And I think that is so funny. Well, I mean, like the universe has said, me. you're gonna have these. Yeah, you're gonna have some of them. Yeah. Yeah. Those were, yeah, wood and metal, and these are just, I think, metal. That's really crazy. Metal. I won something, you won something? Yeah. But eventually this is going to be awesome, and it's going to be warm. And so, wait, wait. Thank you to the Palus Yarn Company. How many, okay, how many of these have you used? Th this is one. That's I'm one. Getting, I'm getting ready to cast on the second, the second so skein. So, I, I bought two, and I, I won one, and, I, and yeah. I bought two more. This is all I have left. I can't see Really? Yeah. So the, that that whole thing made. I'm telling you, this is. I, I mean, like, I don't even care if I can't wear it until winter yeah, or fall 2018. Um, I'm I'm excited. Good. I'm glad you think that way because it's going to be a while. Yeah, I don't care. That's fine. <laughs> um, I will show you a hot mess. Just to show you again, I've been knitting for six months. I know I'm doing a lot of things well. I'm not doing some things well. This is my first time ever doing double, not double pointing needles, ever doing magic loop, and my first time doing gloves. I took these apart many times and kept on trying. I oh, five times. This is a Six. pattern from Rib Magazine. Nothing against Rib Magazine because I'm the one still learning, so their pattern's probably. It's perfect. too bad you didn't have their magazine. Yeah, yeah, it's over there. But um, like this cool pattern right here. It's actually supposed to be on this side. Um, it's supposed to come down to about here, but I ripped it apart so many times that I was afraid I was going to screw up and run out of yarn up here. So I just kept on so there's, trying. So there's I, little, I didn't want to start a new scanning yarn. So there's little of balls of yarn everywhere. Sins. Yes. So they fit. They could be longer here. They could be longer well, here. Well, actually, they don't look they don't look bad far away. <laughs> yeah, this is bad far away. Uh, next time, I'm, I'm going to... Basically, I'm showing you these. They're almost... They're 98% finished. They're a disaster. I'm going to try it again. I don't know if I'm going to try the rib pattern. The rib magazine pattern, for the first time knitting, some of these stitches I didn't know. It was like M1... K something, do something only if it's Tuesday night and 54 degrees. It's too bad you couldn't have a little backup. And... It's too bad you couldn't have a little like workshop. Like if there was somebody who had already successfully made those, mm -hmm. then it's like, hey, like, okay, let's do a meetup. Yeah. Actually, okay. So there, you... there, there are many things like that. You can go to different your local yarn stores and stuff. But there's some holes and stuff in the thumbs. Which I've read that that can happen around here, but it's something that it's trial and error. It's something I'm working on. Are you enjoying and that challenge? I, I did. I actually did enjoy it, especially uh, DPNs make me want to scream. What's a DPN? Uh, double pointed needles. Okay. For some reason, they make me want to scream. So I was like, you know what? I got to either learn that or magic loop. So I tried the magic loop method, and so far it worked. Um, few, few eh in there, but most of it looks pretty good. So these are my so wait, gloves. Wait, so how do these compare to your first, your second iteration, your third iteration? How, like, how are these coming along? Are you improving? Yes, yes, I am. Yes, I am improving. Because the first few times before I ripped them apart, I never even put the thumb in. So I finished the thumb. The first one. I got I thumbs. Just, I got thumbs. So yeah, it's getting better. The next ones are gonna hopefully look perfect. It gets better. Yes. <laughs> the very last thing I have. This past holiday, I probably made... I made that bag, I made, too. He made this bag, yes. Not our coolest fabric, but it's really well-constructed. And this one also has I Am A Bear. Right there. Um, made many hats this Christmas. Most of them were uh, a free pattern on Ravelry called Jason's Cashmere Hat. This pattern is awesome. It's, it's very easy to follow. Sweet Fiber is the name? Yeah, I think so. And it's free. If, if you put on Ravelry Jason's Cashmere Hat, 
It's made, this is just an Aaron weight. I made mine in worsted. If you are thinking about getting into cables and you've never done cables before, this is probably the pattern for you because it was very easy to follow. I'm making myself one after making, like literally I said, I think probably six or seven of these over Christmas, and I want to make one for myself. It's going to be uh, a long rim so you can fold it up like that. I'm sorry, this and is your came, first time doing this? No, this is probably my eighth time doing this, but this is, I'm making for me. Treat yourself. Yes, I'm treating myself because I made all these for uh, like our friend, we had a little holiday gathering. I made everyone this hat except for These myself. are those? Yeah. Okay, I never got one either, but I, whatever. Yeah, so I made this. No, this. you were banging these out like gangbusters. Yeah, they're super easy, and they I think they look awesome. They're, uh, this is made out of a Cascade 220. All the ones I made for the holidays are made out of Lion Brands wool something yarn. But I made a red one, a blue one. You like them. A heather. Yeah, I'm not a yarn snob, so I can, I'm not going to buy a $40 skin of yarn. But I like the... Local independent stores, I like indie dyers, but I can walk into Joann's and grab some Lion Brand stuff. Mm -hmm. I try not to stray from Lion Brand because if the other stuff, it's just not for me, I don't, the feel and stuff. So that is the last thing of what are you making? And this will probably be completed by the next time we, we have a little episode. All right, so if that's done, what are you making? Oh, you know what? Coming back to um, the sewing expo. It was funny because when I do the paper piecing, you need a bookmark. You need a bookmark to fold the paper and then you're trimming mm -hmm. the, um, the excess and you're leaving yourself some, sewing, um, some allowance. Well, we saw, I mean, like they had on this one table, they had a bunch of bookmarks. And I was like, ooh, let's nab them. So I picked them and then I, it wasn't until today I looked at them and I was like, oh, February 28th to March 3rd, 2019. They already have next year's sewing expo uh, dates. It's which a I big one, that's why. It's that's what she one. said. <laughs> <laughs> and so now we had, we did that, had to have it. What are you making? Oh, what, oh, are you it's making? My, oh, what am I making? I forgot. Okay, so I don't need this. All right, so I'm still in Quiltland. And I started out with the um, beheaded. And this was my first uh, try at uh, paper piecing. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to quilt, i like, okay, I've done a, little, a mini quilt block. But now I want to try a full-on quilt. So I'm more into the modern. You know, like I, I don't want the... the the granny flowers. I don't want the wedding rings. I mean, like, I, I can appreciate country some of them. House. Is, some of the country ones I can appreciate. Not for me. It's but not I really like modern ones. And I finally came along and found uh, Amy Garrow's Paper Piece Modern. Paper piecing is a really great way to get into quilting. And her, if I were to compare, uh, who are these people? The whole circle studio, like, again, I'm talking about what I do, user research, and, like, this is night and day. Like, Amy, when the, her directions are amazingly clear and well thought out. But, I mean, like, she, both of them came, if I was comparing apples to oranges, theirs comes with the B uh, patterns, and you photocopy those, and... On you go. Amy's also comes with, it's not just a book of like patterns, but it also comes with the paper piecing patterns that you copy. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm actually doing the, um, the one that's featured on the cover. It's called Icy Waters. And what for me, why she really is great is because she tells you how big to cut your strips. The, on these guys, you actually have to kind of guesstimate, which led me into some frustration because mm -hmm. I was so afraid of wasting fabric that I ended up getting in my own way. Whereas she told you, hey, these are the these are the pieces and these are the colors and these are the sizes that you need. Then all you had to do is really plan it out. So I, she didn't suggest this, but I went and said, okay, I'm going to try these colors. I know this is very 
very heavy. Um, it's dark and heavy, but I think the colors look well. They look good. So like this one in the back, this is going to be the, the quilt backing. And then all of these plus white, white's going to break it all up. Um, yeah, all I have to do is go, okay, this is going to be one or two or E or whatever. So you took it from a cool temperature like the cover and you made it into more of a... I mean, like these, like, it's icy water is, the, is to, this. To hellfire. To hellfire. But you're like, again, for me, it's like, it's a learning experience. Yeah. And yeah. like, I'm taking what I've already learned through Beheaded and now hellfire, I'm going to expand on that. I'll tell you, there's 48 blocks to make this pattern and in just like two or three days, I'm already on half, more than halfway through making the blocks. So it's it's really been a good a good pattern to, to try out. Yeah, good. I've already figured out what my next uh, quilt's gonna be, but like I'm pacing myself. Like after I've got the piecing, then I'm gonna have my sandwiching, then I have to do the quilting. It's gonna be fun. Good. Yeah, I'm excited. It's gonna be a good 2018. I got a lot of things that I want to do. I want to make some sweaters. Well, not some. I want to make at least a sweater or a cardigan. Again, I'm a cardigan person, so that's that's my goal this year. To it's make good. a to make a cardigan. That's why. Yeah. Well, that's why I've been working so much on shawls to get that stitching pretty even and correct. That way, when I actually start a cardigan and something that I'm just gonna wear that's gonna hang, mm -hmm. that's gonna look good. Uh, one more thing that I forgot. So, for me on the Bernina. Um, I'm using the 20 C foot for my paper piecing. And it's like, really, I want to be able to see where the lines that you follow that you're sewing on. So for me, it was important to have an open toe foot. So this is a, it is a C because it's going to recognize on the Bernina. It'll recognize what that foot is. It won't let me make any stitches that I'm not supposed to with this foot, but it's nice because the, the toe is open. I, all I have to do is follow the line. No, yeah. Nothing's um, obstructed. So this is really working out well for me. Nice. 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 All right. So uh, anything else? That's all we have on our agenda for okay. our first episode. I think we yeah. gave you a lot, letting you know who we are. If you made it this far, thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you. Thank oh, you. so well, but what's going to be uh, coming around the corner? I don't know. Hopefully we'll make some more stuff and finish our products. What do you have planned? Well, I know that um, one of the things that we're, we're trying to come up with some different ideas of like what our show topics are going to be. So I think what would be fun is starting next time, we're going to start taking a question out of a, out of a jar. Yeah. But and like some of the questions would be like, who do you tune, turn to on YouTube for different things? What are your three favorite tools that you can't live without besides like needles and sewing machines? Yeah. Uh, patterns that you really enjoy and things like that. I don't, I don't know if we're going to have a fishbowl and it's going to be like on the spot or we're going to pick one and say next week we're going to cover these kind of things. I thought also that we should do like challenges. So like I'm going to surprise you and say these are your fibers. Oh, okay. You're going to have a challenge. Okay. We'll see what we can do. And maybe I'll have, because I have some fibers that I, on backup, that you're supposed to be making stuff for me. There's only so many times or so many hours in the day. I know, but I think that, <coughs> excuse me, I think that would be fun that, um, you know, like, we give each other challenges. I'll do it. Yeah. I'm up for a challenge. All right. So... Feel free to leave comments. We're not looking for a lot of attention, but we're looking for some, you know, healthy um, interaction with everybody. And I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you enjoyed it as well. All right. We'll see you in a few weeks. Thank you. Oh, my God. Bye. <laughs>